gentlemen, we've just come from a uh, meeting where eight members of the Security Council were able to uh, meet with UN officials and humanitarian non-governmental organizations about the situation in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, we've discussed, first of all, the crisis inside the uh, so-called no-fire zone in the far northeast of the country and the situation in the IDP uh, camps. Uh, the uh, reports that we've uh, had would be shocking to anyone who uh, had not followed this uh, conflict uh, over the last few months. Uh, the situation in the so-called uh, no-fire zone is uh, appalling in its humanitarian distress. Uh, it involves uh, up to 50,000 people, according to uh, some uh, NGO estimates, even 100,000, according to some other uh, groups, uh, crammed into an area of some three square uh, kilometers, uh, smaller than Central uh, Park. Uh, there is no question that civilian life is being lost on a large uh, scale. The rise in violence over the weekend has claimed hundreds of civilian lives. We have also heard reports from credible and serious uh, organizations who choose their words carefully that there has been uh, the use of heavy uh, artillery uh, into the uh, northeast of the country and affecting civilians in the so-called no-fire uh, zone. Uh, we are determined to follow this up. Uh, with the Sri Lankan authorities as a matter of the utmost urgency since it goes directly contrary to the commitments that were made to Foreign Minister Kushner and I when we were in Sri Lanka. In respect of the situation in the IDP uh, camps, this remains uh, a major concern. There is enormous strain on the uh, civilians in the IDP camps. There is insufficient access either by humanitarian uh, organizations or by the UN. We were also uh, told about the continuing denial uh, of visas and of other permits for access around uh, the country. Uh, we believe that uh, access is absolutely vital uh, for uh, the UN and NGOs, but also for journalists, if there is to be proper witness to the situation that afflicts the civilians uh, in this country. It's also important to say that there is no doubt in anyone's mind that the LTTE are preventing civilians from leaving the no-fire zone, consistent with their own murderous behavior uh, in the past. Uh, I think it's also important that I say, uh, on behalf of myself and uh, the three European colleagues on the Security uh, Council, that we have no doubt at all that the situation, the humanitarian situation uh, in Sri Lanka is something that the Security Council should address. I'm going to invite my two colleagues to say a few words, and then we're happy to take some questions. Just to add what uh, David Miliband said, I think we all are shocked about the news we have heard today from the NGOs and from OCHA. I think uh, from the Austrian point of view, we are very much concerned about this situation today. And uh, I just would like to announce three points. First of all, I think uh, we should ask the government of Sri Lanka just to protect their people because it's an obligation in the framework of United Nations. They have to protect the life of their people and they have to try to get them out from the fire soon. Just the second point is, I think uh, we have to concentrate in this moment to the situation in the camps. As we have heard, uh, this is really a shocking situation and uh, we should ask the government of Sri Lanka just uh, to let in the camps, independent monitors, just to find uh, out what's going on really in these camps. And Thirdly, I think we all have to have a look to the future. What could be the political solution? And I think um, we should uh, draw the attention also to this point of view, because uh, it will not end with a military action. We have to think about the situation afterwards. Yes, we went there with David, and uh, really this is impossible to support. So what is the issue, what is the additional asset we can give to the civilian population? Et let me vous le dire en français maintenant, puisque I support all what has been said by my two colleagues. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire? Est-ce que l'opinion publique va réagir ou non? Nous, de notre côté, les trois ministres, et je suis sûr, les 27 ministres de l'Union européenne, nous allons demander à nos collègues ici de faire quelque chose de politiquement fort. Et je pense que nous devons essayer 
d'attirer l'attention du Conseil de sécurité et peut-être à ce niveau d'avoir une réaction. Pour le reste, David, il a dit très clairement les cinq points et les cinq points étaient des mining. Nous étions prêts à aider les gens là et à aider le Sri Lankan gouvernement et les gens à déminer. Accès à cette partie haute pour les agences pour les NGOs avec des projets, donner de la nourriture, donner des supplies médicaux. Oui, nous étions en accord avec le président lui-même, Raja Paksé. Mais alors, qu'est-ce que nous attendons Nous attendons tous nous à la fin du bombing, à la fin de toute vie, pas seulement la souffrance, mais toute vie dans ce pocket, un siège de siège. Je vous appelle, parce que vous êtes nos amis pour nous conduire l'attention de la communauté internationale à cette partie du monde. Merci beaucoup.